Earlier in the series, we looked at how to edit MIDI notes. Now let's look at how to edit the pitch of audio. First of all, I'll begin by double clicking on the audio event. And you'll see that this automatically opens up the lower zone. And it's also changed this left zone to reflect the fact that an audio part is being edited. And there's this tab here for vary audio. Now, if you can't see this tab by default, you just need to expand it. And then if I press edit vary audio, Cubase is gonna calculate all of the pitches in the audio. And these are now represented uh, much in the same way as MIDI notes are. Was it you I was looking for? All the time it was you. So much like MIDI notes, these events can be clicked and dragged up and down to change their pitch. Now, if you can't hear the audio feedback when you click and drag the notes, you just need to make sure that acoustic feedback is enabled on the toolbar here. Was it you I was looking for? You can also adjust the phrasing of audio by dragging the warp points, and you'll see that any neighboring notes are affected also. Was it you I was looking for? Now, as well as manually changing the pitch and altering the phrasing of the audio, we can also apply what's called pitch quantization. And all this means is that it will snap these notes to the nearest musical note on the grid. So I'm gonna select all these events by pressing Control and A, and then here on the left, I'm gonna drag the quantize pitch slider up to 100. And if you sort of pay attention to these notes over here on the right, you'll see that they're gradually aligned with the musical grid. Although this audio may have already had some pitch correction applied, uh, but you can still see the effect in action here. All the time it was you. Now, if you find that there's too much wavering in the notes or too much vibrato, you can also use the straight and curve control. And this will flatten the notes out. Although at extreme values, you can end up with a kind of robotic effect, um, which might be good if that's the sound that you're going for. All the time it was you. You can also control these parameters directly from the note itself. So this lower handle here will adjust the pitch quantization, while the upper handle will control the amount of straightening. You'll also notice that when I hover near the bottom of the note event, the tool changes into the scissors tool. And this allows me to create new note segments, which can then be repitched to create new melodies. Uh, and much like MIDI notes, you can also use the arrow keys to change the selection, as well as the pitch. All the time it was you. So for example, here you see this kind of staircase effect because there's a little bit too much note straightening going on. So I could just select these and bring the amount of straightening down. And now you'll see there's more of a legato effect between the different pitches. All the time it was you. You can also adjust the formants of any selected notes. So again, to do that, I'll just select a range of notes here and then use this shift formant control. And this is usually used to compensate for the effect of shifting um, up or down by a large amounts, but you can also use it as a creative tool in its own right. All the time it was you. Was you. One other thing to mention is that in addition to warping the notes by clicking and dragging, you can alternate and click and drag to change the boundary of the parts. And this is useful for correcting where Cubase hasn't properly detected the onset of a new word or note in a phrase. Lastly, we also have some different snap modes. Now, at the moment, absolute means that as soon as I drag a note, it'll be quantized onto the musical grid. Did it you, did it you, did it you, did it you. Uh, but as is sometimes the case with an imperfect instrument such as the voice, you might find that the note needs to remain offset from the musical grid slightly uh, in order to sound natural. In which case, you could use relative mode. And now when I click and drag, the note will move up and down in semitone intervals, but it will remain offset from the musical grid as per the original performance. So this seems like a good place to take a break, and I'll catch you in the next chapter.